Hi friends, most of you watch my channel without subscribing. Please subscribe if you like my stories. Have a good rest. You never know what life has in store for you. I never thought I'd be a detective on a mission to uncover my own wife's infidelity, but that's exactly what I found myself doing. Our story began in a most unexpected place, a chance encounter that would set in motion a chain of events that would forever change my life. It was a rainy afternoon, I was hurrying to get home from work. As I turned the corner onto my street, I saw a woman standing under an umbrella, her face buried in a book. She was absolutely stunning, with long, flowing hair and piercing blue eyes. I couldn't help but stare. As I looked closer, I noticed that she was struggling to juggle her book, umbrella, and a bag of groceries. I offered to help, and she smiled gratefully. As we walked together, we struck up a conversation, and I was immediately drawn to her warmth, intelligence, and humor. Over the next few weeks, we spent almost every day together. We talked about everything and nothing, and I found myself falling for her more and more with each passing day. She was everything I had ever wanted in a woman. One evening, we were strolling through the park when I stopped and looked into her eyes. I love you, I said. She smiled and hugged me tightly. I love you too, she whispered. A few months later, we got married. It was the happiest day of my life. A few years into our marriage, my wife was promoted at work. She was thrilled. I was so proud of her. However, as her career took off, I noticed a change in her behavior. She started coming home later and later, and she was always working weekends. I tried to be understanding, but I couldn't help but feel neglected. I missed our old life together. One evening, I was waiting for my wife to get home from work. She had called me earlier to say that she was going to be late. I was feeling worried and anxious. As I sat there waiting, I started thinking about her behavior. I couldn't shake the feeling that she was hiding something from me. I decided to do some research online. I read a lot about the signs of infidelity, and I started to feel sick to my stomach. There were so many red flags, and I couldn't ignore them anymore. Attempt number one. I waited for my wife to go to the bathroom, my heart pounding in my chest. I knew I shouldn't do this, but I couldn't help it. I had to find out for sure. My fingers felt clammy and cold as I reached for my wife's phone, lying innocently on the bedside table. I had been battling with a growing suspicion for weeks, a nagging doubt that gnawed at my insides like a persistent parasite. The signs were subtle, almost imperceptible, but they were there, whispering to me in the quiet moments when my wife's mind seemed to drift far away. I had tried to ignore these whispers, to convince myself that they were nothing more than the echoes of my own insecurity. But the suspicion had taken root, and it refused to be silenced. And now, armed with this dubious knowledge, I found myself standing at the precipice of betrayal, my heart pounding in my chest like a trapped bird. I hesitated, my hand hovering over the phone, the weight of the moment pressing down on me like an unbearable burden. But the compulsion was too strong to resist. I had to know. I had to break the veil of uncertainty and confront the truth, no matter how painful it might be. I picked up the phone, my fingers trembling slightly. The screen flickered to life, revealing a sea of familiar apps and icons. I scanned the home screen, my eyes darting from one icon to the next, searching for any hint of betrayal. Nothing. I opened the messaging app, my heart sinking slightly as I was met with a list of innocuous conversations with friends and family. I scrolled through the messages, my eyes searching for any sign of impropriety, but there was nothing. I opened her email, her social media accounts, her online shopping history. Nothing. A wave of relief washed over me, mingled with a sense of confusion. Was I wrong? Had I been too quick to jump to conclusions? I closed the phone, my mind still reading from the roller coaster of emotions. As I placed the phone back on the bedside table, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had just missed something. The suspicion remained, lurking in the shadows of my mind, waiting for the next opportunity to emerge. I returned to the bathroom, the scent of my wife's perfume still lingering in the air. I splashed some water on my face, trying to calm my racing heart. As I looked into the mirror, 
I saw a man haunted by doubts, his eyes clouded with uncertainty. The question hung heavy in the air, unanswered and unsatisfying. Was I being paranoid, or was my wife indeed cheating on me? Attempt number two. Armed with renewed determination, I decided to take a more proactive approach to uncovering my wife's alleged infidelity. I had already checked her cell phone and that yielded no results, but I couldn't shake the nagging suspicion that something was wrong. One evening my wife informed me over the phone that she would be late at work again. This was becoming a regular occurrence and I couldn't shake the feeling of resentment. I decided to pay her a surprise visit at the office, hoping to catch her off guard and perhaps uncover some clues. As I drove to my wife's place of employment, I was filled with anxiety and anticipation that I would finally learn the truth. I parked the car a few blocks from the office, deciding to walk the remaining distance so as not to arouse suspicion. As I approached the building, the light from the fluorescent bulbs outside the windows illuminated the street, creating an eerie impression. I entered the building, the scent of freshly brewed coffee and the faint hum of office equipment lingering in the air. I made my way through the maze of cubicles and offices, my heart pounding in my chest like a drum solo. Finally, I reached my wife's department, a quiet room filled with the rhythmic clatter of keyboards and the occasional rustle of papers. I peered through the glass partition, skimming the room with my eyes. My wife sat at her desk, frowning her eyebrows in concentration as she worked on her computer. Her co-workers, mostly women, were absorbed in their work, oblivious to the drama unfolding outside their doors. I felt a wave of relief come over me. The wife was indeed at work and was dutifully performing her duties. The thought of her cheating on me right here, surrounded by co-workers, seemed absurd. I decided to make my presence known. I knocked on the glass partition and my wife looked up in surprise. I smiled and waved my hand, pointing to the door. I brought you a snack, I said, holding out a pizza box and a can of Coca-Cola. I entered the department, footsteps rumbling in the quiet room. My wife met me on the doorstep, her face flushed with embarrassment and gratitude. You didn't have to do that, she said, picking up the pizza and Coke. I thought you were hungry, I replied with a note of irony in my voice. We sat down at her table and shared a pizza and Coke. We chatted about her day at work, and I listened intently, trying to catch her mood. She looked relaxed and calm, no hint of slyness in her eyes. When we finished our meal, I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd misjudged her. I apologized for disturbing her, and she assured me it was all right. I felt ashamed of my suspicions, but at the same time, I felt a rush of relief. I walked out of her office feeling a weight lifted from my shoulders. The darkness that had been clouding my mind began to recede, replaced by a glimmer of hope. Attempt number three. Doubt gnawed at me, not wanting to let go. I had already made two attempts to find out the truth, but both of them had brought nothing but frustration and a growing sense of paranoia. At the same time, my wife's behavior continued to cause me constant anxiety. Her aloofness, late nights, and seemingly endless business at work created picture of an alienated woman whose heart was no longer invested in our marriage. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was missing something important, some piece of the puzzle that would help unravel the mystery of my wife's changed behavior. The seed of suspicion, once planted, had taken root, unwilling to be uprooted by chance or desire. Determined to find answers, I decided to take a couple of days off work, already developing a plan. I contacted a trusted friend who had a spare car and suggested a trade. The friend, understanding my predicament, readily agreed. His loyalty to me was unwavering. For the next two days, I carefully planned my surveillance, carefully choosing a place that would allow me to discreetly observe my wife's movements. I settled into the depths of anonymity, blending into the shadows as a silent observer of the unfolding drama of my own life. In a borrowed car that provided anonymity, I began stalking my wife, following her every move throughout the day. I watched her enter her office building, and the familiar structure cast a shadow of doubt on my hopes. The hours stretched into an agonizing eternity, each minute a test of my patience and determination. I watched my wife enter her workplace, 
a place I had previously associated with her determination and ambition, now shadowed by a shadow of suspicion. Throughout the day, I observed her interactions with her co-workers, noting their casual banter and easy camaraderie. I looked for any hint of inappropriate behaviour, any sign that would confirm my darkest fears. But there was nothing. Several hours passed, the sun began to set, colouring the sky with orange and purple hues. My wife emerged from the building with a haggard face. And so it went on for all the days of my tracking. My heart clenched as I realised the futility of my efforts. I had seen nothing to suggest infidelity, no secret meetings, no hidden dates. My wife was simply working late, as she claimed, and her fatigue testified to her dedication to her career. A wave of guilt swept over me, the weight of my unfounded suspicions weighing heavily on my conscience. I doubted my wife's integrity, allowed my suspicions to cloud my judgment, and undermined the trust that was the foundation of our marriage. I returned to my friend's house, my mind a tangled web of emotions. I thanked him for his help and apologised for my mistaken suspicions. He assured me that he understood, and his words were a comforting balm to my confused spirit. As I drove home, the silence in the car was deafening, every moment echoing with the echoes of my own doubts. I began to doubt my perception, wondering if I had been too sensitive, if I had allowed my insecurities to distort my perception of my wife's actions. Could it be that my wife is simply a hard-working, dedicated woman and my suspicions are merely the product of a troubled mind? The thought was both liberating and unsettling, leaving me in a state of uncertainty. Her behaviour had changed, there was no denying that. The spark in her eyes had dimmed, replaced by a distant aloofness that had become a barrier between us. I longed for the woman I had married, the woman who had filled our lives with laughter and love. But as I watched her move through the motions of our daily routine, I couldn't help but feel a growing sense of detachment. The bond that had once held us together seemed to be fraying, slowly unravelling with each passing day. I was trapped in a state of limbo, unable to reconcile my suspicions with the lingering hope that my wife was faithful. I felt like I was losing my grip on reality, my mind teetering on the edge of an abyss. Attempt number four. Determined to unravel the tangled threads of my suspicions, I decided to make one final attempt to uncover the truth. I would orchestrate a business trip, an intentional absence that would allow me to observe my wife's behaviour from afar. With a heavy heart, I approached my boss, requesting a week-long business trip to Chicago. The trip would conveniently cover the weekend, providing me with an extended window of observation. He agreed to my request, unaware of the tumultuous storm brewing within my mind. I contacted a private detective, a man of discretion and expertise, and briefed him on my suspicions. I entrusted him with the task of monitoring my wife's movements during my absence, his keen eyes acting as my surrogate presence. On the eve of my departure, I invited a skilled technician to our home, instructing him to install surveillance cameras within its confines. The cameras were meticulously positioned, the lenses discreetly capturing the unfolding scenes without disrupting the rhythm of everyday life. As I boarded the plane bound for Chicago, my mind was a whirlwind of emotions. Anxiety gnawed at my insides, the fear of betrayal casting a dark shadow over my thoughts. Yet, amidst the turmoil, a flicker of hope remained, a fragile flame that I desperately clung to. The days in Chicago unfolded in a blur of work meetings and forced interactions. My mind, however, remained tethered to my home, constantly checking in with the detective, eager for any sign, any revelation that would either confirm or dispel my doubts. The weekdays passed uneventfully, the detective's reports devoid of any incriminating evidence. My hopes began to rise, a fragile belief that my wife's loyalty remained intact. The detective's report for the weekend was more intriguing. A car had pulled up to our house on Saturday afternoon and stayed parked for three hours. The detective couldn't identify the driver, but the car's description matched that of my friend's vehicle. A wave of suspicion washed over me, the familiar doubts resurfacing with renewed vigour. I contacted my wife, feigning casualness as I inquired about her weekend activities. She nonchalantly mentioned she explained that there had been a sewer line breakdown at the house, and she had called our friend to help out. He spent the afternoon repairing the damage, 
The problem had been resolved, she assured Meade, a sewer line breakdown, her explanation seemingly plausible. Her words calmed my flailing thoughts. Missed it again. With a sense of relief and regret, I gave the command to cease surveillance. Upon my return from Chicago, I arranged for the removal of the surveillance cameras, the weight of their presence no longer bearable. When the security specialist arrived to dismantle the cameras, I couldn't resist the urge to review some of the recordings. I fast-forwarded through the mundane scenes of my wife's daily life, searching for anything that might have escaped my attention. The footage blurred into a monotonous montage of household chores, errands, and quiet moments of solitude. I grew bored, and my initial curiosity waned. With a sigh of resignation, I turned off the monitor, and the lingering doubts finally subsided. I had done everything I could to discover the truth, and if it remained elusive, then perhaps it was not meant to be known. As the days turned into weeks, my doubts began to fade, replaced by a growing sense of agreement. Perhaps I was wrong, perhaps my suspicions were unfounded. Update. A month had passed since my aborted surveillance operation, and I had almost convinced myself that my suspicions were unfounded. My wife's behavior had returned to a semblance of normalcy, and I was determined to put the past behind us and rebuild our relationship. But then, like a recurring nightmare, the sewer in our house clogged again. It was a Saturday morning, and my wife had left for work, leaving me to deal with the unpleasant task of plumbing repairs. As I delved into plumbing repairs, I noticed something strange. The old insulation tape I had used in a previous repair was still wrapped around the pipes and looked intact. However, that color tape had run out, so I bought new tape in case of new problems. If my friend had indeed come over to fix the sewer the previous weekend, as my wife had claimed, why hadn't he replaced the old tape with the new one? The discrepancy ignored at me, reigniting the doubts that had plagued me for so long. I decided to revisit the surveillance footage, hoping to find some answers. As I scrolled through the hours of recorded video, I noticed something that made my heart skip a beat. On the same weekend that my friend was supposedly fixing the sewer, he had actually been at our house, but not to work on the plumbing. Instead, he was there with my wife. They were in our bedroom making love. It was hard for me to watch. The videotape captured every painful detail, the betrayal laid bare. A chill ran down my spine. The sudden realization hit me like a blow to the gut. My wife had never called our friend to fix the sewer. She had lied to me, fabricating the entire story to cover her tracks. Anger surged through me, a torrent of emotions that threatened to consume me. I had been so close, so close to uncovering the truth, but my suspicions had been thwarted by my own misplaced trust. A wave of guilt washed over me as I recalled my conversation with my friend. I had foolishly confided in him, revealing my doubts and suspicions. And now, it seemed, he had betrayed my trust, alerting my wife to my plans and enabling her to deceive me further. I felt like a fool, a puppet manipulated by the deceitful strings of my own insecurities and the treachery of a friend. My wife and my friend, two people I had trusted implicitly, had conspired against me, leaving me feeling utterly humiliated and betrayed. With a heart heavy with sorrow and anger, I decided to confront my wife. The first thing I did was to invite my wife's parents to visit us the next day. They were surprised but agreed. I called her immediately, informing her that her parents were coming over for the day. I wanted her to face the consequences of her actions, to be exposed before those she held dear. When my wife's parents arrived, I ushered them into the living room where I had set up a projector. I explained to them, my voice trembling with emotion, that I had something important to show them. With trembling hands, I turned on the projector, and the room was bathed in the soft glow of the screen. The video began to play, capturing every intimate detail of my wife's infidelity, a betrayal laid bare for all to see. My wife's parents watched in stunned silence, their faces etched with shock and disappointment. They had never suspected their daughter capable of such deceit, and the realization of her betrayal left them speechless. My wife, her face flushed with shame, sat in silence, her eyes downcast, unable to meet the gaze of her loved ones. She had been exposed, 
had lies and deception laid bare for all to see. As the video ended, a heavy silence filled the room. The weight of betrayal hung in the air, a suffocating presence that threatened to consume us all. I looked at my wife, her face pale and drawn, her eyes filled with regret. I felt a pang of sympathy for her, for the pain she had caused herself and those she loved. But my anger, my hurt, was still too raw, too fresh to allow for forgiveness. I knew that our marriage was beyond repair. The trust shattered, the foundation crumbled. With a heavy heart, I knew it was time to end this charade, to set us both free from the shackles of a broken relationship. I stood up, my voice firm and resolute, and told my wife that it was time for her to leave. She didn't protest, her head hung low, her spirit broken. She silently gathered her belongings and left the house without a word, leaving behind the remnants of a love that had been shattered by lies and deceit. As I watched her drive away, I felt a sense of emptiness watch over me. I had lost my wife, my friend, and a part of myself. In the aftermath, my wife tried to justify her actions, pleading for forgiveness and understanding. But her words fell on deaf ears. The trust had been broken, and there was no going back. I filed for divorce, unable to bear the thought of sharing my life with someone who had so carelessly shattered my trust. It was a painful decision, but it was the only way I could move forward and rebuild my life. Update 2. The months that followed were spent in litigation and emotional turmoil. I tried to come to terms with the betrayal, with the fact that the woman I loved and cherished had become a despicable traitor. As the divorce finalized, I felt a sense of relief mixed with regret. I was freed from the suffocating weight of deception, but a part of me still mourned the loss of the love I thought we had shared. I immersed myself in my work, seeking solace in the familiarity of my daily routine. I surrounded myself with supportive friends and family, their love and encouragement providing a much-needed lifeline. Slowly but surely, I began to heal. The pain didn't disappear entirely, but it became a dull ache, a reminder of the lessons I had learned. I learned that trust was a precious gift, not to be given lightly. I learned that people could disappoint you, even those who thought you knew best. And I learned that life was a journey filled with both pain and joy, and that it was up to me to find the strength to keep moving forward. Thank you for listening to my story. I wish you never to face betrayal of friends or your life partner. Now write a comment and give a like if you like this story.